Now we have to talk about how we can customize uh, forms for items in lists and libraries using SharePoint framework. And what I want to talk uh, with you about uh, is a new capability that Microsoft introduced in SharePoint framework 115. Uh, I would say finally, because we were looking for it uh, since a long time ago. Uh, we can now use SharePoint Framework uh, to create custom forms uh, for uh, adding, uh, editing, or displaying uh, items in lists and libraries. When we create uh, uh, such uh, extensions, we can uh, configure the extensions to render just one of those or one or more of those uh, uh, forms. So for example, you can create an extension which will just customize the edit and new experience, but you don't necessarily need to customize the display experience or the other way around. Because when you register your extension, you can choose what kind of page type you want to customize. And you have uh, a nice uh, enumeration. You can uh, configure the view, the edit, and the new uh, page type. And what is really cool in my opinion is that this new functionality works with lists, libraries, and document sets inside libraries, which I really love. Uh, it works really well also together with the dynamic form control that we have uh, in the PMP React reusable controls, and it makes really easy and simple to create a custom form in uh, literally a matter of minutes. In my opinion, this is a really useful uh, functionality, especially for enterprise level solutions where customers want to have uh, uh, additional level of control of the fields in the UI or they want to uh, bind some of the fields uh, to external APIs, REST APIs or stuff like that. And they uh, eventually don't want to rely on uh, uh, power apps to create the UI, but they want to have a completely customizable solution built with SPFX. Whenever you create such kind of form customizers, you have then to deploy them. And again, in the deployment process, you can choose where you want to apply those custom forms. So you can use the uh, something form client side component ID uh, for the uh, content type, uh, and you can target the new, the display, and the edit uh, form. And you can configure, for example, the display form client side uh, component ID property of a content type, or you can configure the display form client side component properties property of a content type to configure some custom settings for that uh, custom form. You can do that, as I said, for the new display and edit form uh, independently, and you can then save uh, the settings of the content type and make it happen for real. Nowadays, you can uh, uh, use uh, or you can easily use uh, the client side object model and PAP PowerShell to configure those properties on a content type. And in the near future, I'm saying near because we are working on it. In the near future, it will be possible to export and import through the PMP provisioning engine these settings so that if you are creating a custom solution, you are an ISV or whatever else, and you are building your own solution and you want to do PMP provisioning of that solution, including the custom forms, you will be able to do that using the provisioning engine. So that said, and now that we are all on the same page, let me switch to the uh, demo and let me show you how you can create such kind of extensions and what you can do uh, to develop your custom forms. So I'm going to switch uh, to uh, first of all uh, the uh, common prompt just to show you how uh, the uh, human generator for SharePoint uh, will let us create a custom uh, form uh, uh, customizer. So here, just for the sake uh, of uh, simplicity, I have already uh, executed the human generator for SharePoint in a completely random folder, and I'm going to create a solution which will have this nice name. Now, when you have to select what kind of component you want to create, you can select to create an extension. And now, in SharePoint Framework 115, you can select to create a form customizer, which is the new extension that we have. By selecting this one, you will have to provide a name, whatever you like, because I don't really care about this one, which will be just uh, dropped into the trash right after I will execute it, but just to show you the UI. 
And then you can choose if you want to use no framework or if you want to use React, as like as it happens uh, for most of the components that we create uh, using SharePoint framework. I already did it for another really uh, uh, basic uh, uh, form customizer, which is the one I'm going to show you right now. This is what you will get out of the box uh, when you run the human generator. And then we will move to a real demo where I will show you a real form uh, working uh, uh, in a list or in a library or on a document set. So when you generate a form customizer, what you get back uh, in the SRC folder, in the extension subfolder, will be a uh, form customizer class which will inherit or extend the base form customizer type provided by SharePoint Framework, and you can configure a set of custom properties to customize the behavior of your uh, form customizer. Here, like always, you can define uh, whatever properties you like, and you will be able to configure those properties when deploying uh, your form customizer. Once you have done that, uh, aside from the initialization code, uh, in which you can eventually initialize stuff and do whatever you need to do in order to prepare your extension, you have the render method. And in the render method, if you use the React component, you can simply rely on a, a React component, which will do the actual rendering of your form. What is, what is important to know is that whenever you create a form customizer, you have to take care of a couple of actions. When the user will click on the Save button, if the user wants to create a new item or to update an existing item, which is in the edit form, or the user can also click the Cancel button, which will simply close the form without saving the updates or the changes to the item. So you have in the form customizer, you see this dot form saved method and form closed method. These two methods will report back to the SharePoint online infrastructure and will save or simply uh, uh, skip the saving of the item and will tell the backend infrastructure to go back to the uh, list to show the list of items by closing uh, the actual form customizer. So, for example, in this really basic sample, we have a React component. This is the one just uh, automatically generated by the scaffolding tool. In the React component, we simply have the render method of the React component, and here we can do whatever we like. So, you can build your fully customized UI using your own React components. You can rely on the PMP controls. You can use, as I told you before, the dynamic form control. And the only important information that you need to know is that you will have, through the context of SharePoint Framework, access to the item and to the list ID so that you can target the specific item you want to use and you want to edit, display, or if it will be a new item that you are going to add, of course, you will not have the item ID, but you will still have the list ID. So, now that I showed you the basic automatically generated one, let me switch to a real one and let me show first of all the form customizer in action. So let me go to my browser and here we have a demo list which I already configured to have a, custom, a customized form. So for example, if I will select this item or either way this one, I will see in the UI, not the out-of-the-box form, but a custom one which I've built using SharePoint Framework. As you can see here now, I'm showing, I'm using the edit form, so I can change the values of this item. I can change, for example, the taxonomy and go to, I don't know, SharePoint Online and save it. And I will go back to the list of items and my item will be updated. I can add a new item and still I will be able to see my custom form because I decided to associate my form to all of the flavors available just to show you the power of this new capability. So this will be uh, the Viva SIG call and the item will be 100 and uh, just uh, because I called it the Viva one, I will select uh, Microsoft Viva as the taxonomy field. I can save it. I will have my new item available. So really simple and straightforward, and I can use it to build the custom UI of a form for my items using a SharePoint framework. How did I build this uh, uh, customizer? As like as before, I used 
human generator to build the initial scaffolding. But then in my uh, custom uh, form customizer, I decided to uh, rely on my React component uh, using the uh, dynamic form that we have uh, in the PMP React controls family. So you need to add to the packages of your solution the uh, at PMP SPFX controls React in order to be able to use this uh, uh, component. And then in the uh, demo TSX uh, uh, React component, which I use under the cover of the rendering of my form customizer, I simply need to do one thing, which is amazing if you think about that. I simply need to refer to the dynamic form component, which is defined in PMP React controls. Simple as that. And the dynamic form component will require to have the context, the list ID, and the list item ID for the item that you want to uh, edit or to display. And you have the capability to uh, define some custom events on the dynamic form so that, for example, when the user will click on the cancel button, you will have a custom event. When the user will click on the save button, you will have a before submit where you can do eventually some custom validation logic. And then you can say, OK, all good. I don't want to cancel the submission. Or you can say true, cancel the submission. You can intercept any submission error, if any, as I said, or you can have the event on submitted, which means that the item got saved on the target uh, list, and you can just uh, notify the backend infrastructure that you are done. And uh, just for the sake of completeness, in my uh, demo form customizer, when I create the uh, React component, I provide the on save and the on close uh, events relying on the uh, corresponding methods in my um, form customizer. So here on save, I will notify to the SharePoint framework form customizer infrastructure that the user saved the item on close. Of course, I will notify that the user just closed without saving so that on the uh, actual dynamic form, when the user will say, OK, uh, oops, go away. OK, on cancelled. Oh, come on. On cancelled, I will rely on the on close uh, method defined in the properties of my React component. And the same applies for the on submitted, where I rely on the on save uh, property, which maps to my uh, save method. You see here in the properties, I define those two methods. So really, really simple again. And mainly because we have this wonderful control, the dynamic form control, which makes our life really, really easy. Now, what if we want to debug, to test this form customizer? In every form customizer solution, we have the manifest JSON, as like as we do for any other component in SharePoint framework, and we have the ID of the component. This is the information we need to provide whenever we want to configure our form customizer uh, onto a target uh, content type. And if we want to debug it locally within Visual Studio Code, we can just rely on the serve.json file. And here we can configure as many configuration uh, uh, sections as we like. So for example, we uh, have a default one, but we can configure as many as we like. And here I configured my form customizer. Here you can uh, recognize the component ID that I showed you before. And I say for every single flavor of page type, so for the new form, for the edit form, and for the view form or display form, you notice the different page type here. We configure that we want to use our custom component for this specific list. And this will be the URL that we want to activate in the browser when we want to debug our uh, form customizer. And we can eventually provide the custom properties which will be used by the form customizer in order to uh, run it. And we can also specify the item that we want to retrieve from the target list whenever we do the debug of the solution and we want to test it. How can we play with it? Well, we simply need to do gulp serve dash dash config 
and we provide the name of the configuration, or if we will do just gulp serve, we will fall back to the default one. So let's say that we want to play with the uh, a configuration to uh, actually let me move uh, from the list to the library. I have a library in my site. Let me show you. I have this demo library in which I have uh, one document. I can start the new form or the edit form, for example, for this library. As you can see, this is the uh, root folder of my library. This will be the configuration that I'm going to use. I will run Gulp serve with this configuration and it will start this page and let me debug my component uh, targeting that library and that item. Oops, uh, not what I was looking for. Gulp serve is better than server, sorry, typo. Okay, I don't know, I always make this mistake. I don't know if you do the same, but I always do that, serve server, my fault. Okay, so when you run it in debug, you have to accept that you want to load the debug scripts. So you click on load debug scripts, it will take a while, and after a bit of a wait, we will be able to see our form running and uh, editing the item, the item with ID number one in the target uh, library, hopefully. Okay, it is loading now, taking longer than expected, but it will work. Last word, famous words. No, it should, just a matter of waiting. And as soon as it will be ready, we will see the dynamic form loading and we will see all of the fields rendering in the UI of our custom page. And you can do that for, as I said, a list item, a document or a document set. This is actually taking quite long, but I'm pretty sure it will do its magic. I'm confident. We can eventually try to refresh the page just for the sake of warming it up a bit and drums okay let's wait a bit more but i want to show you the output so i'm really wondering why it is taking so long now but we are in the bug so there could be reasons let me double check on this side if something is happening no just working on it so it should be good to go as soon as it, as it will show up you will be able to see the form <laughs> okay, most of us believe you, you it will work. Yes, but you know, I don't believe myself. So, okay, so let's wait a bit. And in the meantime, I just want to show you that from a document set point of view, it is exactly the same story as before. And while it is loading, and I really don't know why it is taking so long, I want to show you a little piece of PowerShell script that I used to register my solution. So when you are done with the debugging, and then we will go back to the form, and you are ready to release your solution, as like as any other SharePoint framework solution, you will simply need to package the solution and deploy it in the app catalog. And using PowerShell, you connect to the target site and you get the target content type you are targeting. And then you can simply configure the display form, client side, component ID, and eventually the properties. And the same applies for the new and for the edit form. You update the content type, you invoke PMP query, and you are done. You have custom, your custom form configured for your target content type in your target list and library. So uh, that said, let me go back briefly here and just to share with you a couple of links, including the uh, source code of the sample that I showed you. And uh, that said, I think that's all for me. So back to you, Patrick. Great stuff, Paolo. Thank you so much for that. Wonderful demo as always, Paolo.